Hi guys, welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today I'm going to show you how to protect your heating system from corrosion, that's the radiators, the boiler, the pump, the pipes, the TRVs, everything on the heating system, but also at the same time protect your water system outlets like taps and shower heads from lime scale buildup and heat exchangers as well by installing this stock core here today. We're going to unbox two of these products so you see exactly what you get if you buy one of them. We're also going to get our science hats on and talk about how these products work to protect your system before going out on site and installing them on a light commercial system and also in my own home. Remember, all the tools I use in this video and these products themselves are in our Amazon store. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Please watch all the way to the end. There's gonna be a beautiful song about this product and about stopping corrosion in your boiler, selected by my AL Army Livestream Massive. If you wanna get involved with the AL Army, click the join button below or the button in the top pinned comment. Let's get on with the video, guys. And remember to hold tight. Remember, you can learn about the products and plumbing in your home by visiting the Plumber Parts Interactive House. Links below. So what does stop core do to protect your heating system from corroding, but also at the same time, all in one product, slows down the buildup and formation of lime scale on products and bits inside the system. And what I mean by that, I'm saying it's gonna reduce lime scale buildup in plate heat exchangers on combi boilers. It's gonna do the same when it comes to the outlet on taps, shower heads, washing machines, anything that's connected via a conductive metal or a water supply that goes back to this will feel the benefits of having a stop call basically protecting the whole system. So, how does it work? Well, it uses a thing called cathodic protection. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. So we're gonna put our science hats on today in the plumber parts video, but we'll do that in a sec. Firstly, let's have a look and see what we get in the box. So I've got the Stopcore Heater Pro 2 here. This is the larger one that I'm gonna be installing at our local pub. The reason for that is, is because it's a lot larger system. There's nine rooms there. It's all underfloor heating. They've also got, I think, three very large uh, hot water tanks there. So this is a lot more in tune with doing that whereas this one here I'm actually going to install in my own home and that's going to be fine for that because I've got what eight to ten radiators there I believe a little bit of underfloor heat in one tank and that should pretty much do that the way I'd rate which one you install on which system is more about the size of the heating system for me than it is how many outlets you have on taps so I always think of that first so what do we get in the box so let's have a look at this large one first we open the box up we've got the usual bits and pieces instructions on how to install it very brief because because these are very, very easy to install. The installation side of this video should be so easy. You should be like, well, even I could do that, okay? It's so simple. Then inside, we've got a small bag of screws in here. We've got a small syringe. We've got a earth wire. We've got a little holding screw and bits and pieces there. A Jubilee clip just here. Then we've got the stop core itself, which I'd say probably weighs about the same amount as a 1980s mobile phone. We've got our wall clamp that will clamp this to the wall when we put it up and install it. Before finally, we've got the earth clamp as well. It's basically a plug that will go into the wall and will earth the stop core and allow it to function properly when we've got it installed. And in stop core's Heater Pro 1, you're gonna have a very, very similar amount of bits and pieces. We've got our instructions again. We've got our slightly smaller stop core here as well with our red wire. Again, we've got our Jubilee clip. We've got a smaller syringe this time with our earth wire as well and a few screws. Our smaller clamp will sit around the front of it like so when it's installed. And the same size earth clamp that we'd install if we were putting a Heater Pro 2 in. So how do these products work and what is cathodic protection? Let's bring some science on the table. And I say that, the science is here on the table already. This is science. Let's get learning. So firstly, we need to understand what is electrochemical corrosion and cathodic protection. Now you've probably come across cathodic protection before when you've heard of a thing called a sacrificial anode. For you apprentices out there, you're gonna probably find sacrificial anodes inside big water tanks and in other industries like the shipping industry, they're installed on the hulls of ships to prevent them rusting away in the seawater. So how has Stopcore harnessed that science, that technology into this simple product here? So firstly, let's understand electrochemical corrosion. So let's say we have two dissimilar metals, say aluminium and copper, and they're immersed in a conductive solution like, let's say, heating system water. Look at this small list of metals here that I've compiled that go from less active to more active metals. Then have a look at a few heating system photos here that I've got and try and identify how many of those metals across that board are present 
and immersed in that electrical conductive solution, i.e. the heating system water, in that photo. So that should give you an idea that we've got a problem here that needs sorting out. The less noble, which is more reactive and therefore with a higher tendency to corrode, becomes the anode. The more noble metal, that means less active, so more resistant to corrosion, becomes the cathode. The anode will be the metal that is corroded. So the more active metal, the anode, oxidizes and releases electrons to the cathode. This corrosion is accelerated by releasing ions from the anode to the cathode as well. And as we've seen here, UK heating systems employ loads of different types of metals. We've got brass, copper, aluminium, steel, to name but a few. So the long and short from what we need to take from this is that the anode corrodes. If we stop the flow of electrons from the anode to the cathode, we can stop corrosion. So how do we stop it? We introduce a more active metal than all of the other metals on the system. So let's say we install the stop core with its magnesium sacrificial anode inside the box. Now, instead of the anode releasing electrons to the cathode, we've now introduced a more active metal inside our stop core, and that active metal is gonna release electrons to what would have been the anode. Our old anode becomes the cathode, and the whole system is protected. So why do we call what's inside the stop core a sacrificial anode? Because over time, it releases all of those electrons, and a stop core will take about three years to do that. So that's how we use a sacrificial anode like magnesium to make that the most active metal on the system, therefore protecting all the less active metals that we can find on the system itself. So the product does two things, and a little extra thing as well, which we'll come to in a sec. It stops corrosion in your heating system and also prevents lime scale by imposing a 1.5 volt protective electric current throughout the whole system. It also does a little extra. It creates a magnetic field, a very slight magnetic field. Therefore, it imparts Brownian motion on lime scale and hard water particles. So it means they won't stick to the components of your heating system or water system as much as they would have done had you not installed the stop core. So the stop core stops the problem at its root, stop core, but also reduces its effects as well if you've already got a problem. Within 14 days, you'll see a reduction in the corrosion in the heating system and an improvement in lime scale buildup on components as well. So it's worth noting that it's a sacrificial anode. So like I said, it takes about three years for the anode to disappear. Every three years, you'll have to replace the stop core on the wall, and you'll see in a minute how easy it is to do. But for the relatively cheap price of what they are, and you can find them on our Amazon store as well in the products I featured in videos, uh, every three years, it's well worth the investment. So you've seen what's in the box, you know how they work, you know the science and the thought that's gone into this product. So why don't we go and install this one at my house and this one at the local pub and I'll show you how easy they are to install as well. Right then, so we're at my local pub, which is a larger commercial property. They've got nine rooms here, and the room that I'm in at the moment has got one, two, three hot water tanks in it, a large accumulator, they've got underfloor heating, and obviously they've got nine bathrooms as well. So there's a lot of water going around here. That's why I'm going to install the slightly larger of the stop cores, and that's the Heater Pro 2. So I'm gonna show you now how to install this. While I'm doing that, there's just gonna be a couple of points that I wanna address with you while we're doing it that I think might head off any comments you have in the comments section at the pass, as I like to say. It's very dead sound in here. It's because we've covered in loads of sheets and stuff from the rooms, because they've got so many rooms here. Um, so the first thing I do is think about where I'm going to site the stop core. So if we just get out this one, this is going to be slightly larger, like we saw earlier on. Now you need to think about three things. Obviously, it needs to go somewhere where you can actually physically fit it. So up here is looking good. Somewhere there, I think would be great, something like that. But also it needs to be close to a nice breeze block wall, like what we've got here, or a brick wall. It doesn't want to be going into a stud work wall, because that won't have the earthing capabilities that we need to make this wall work properly. Uh, we also need to think, right, can this lead reach the system that we want to protect? And also, can our earth lead reach the wall? So this looks to me, this little square up here, looks like the perfect place to do it. So if we just have that. So before I put this on the wall, I'm just gonna pop the earth clamp on here, because it's just easier to do while we've got it down here in front of us. So a few things about this. We're gonna be putting a syringe of water in this in a minute to get this activated. I just want you to know that if you do put this in a freezing condition, it's not actually going to matter. So there's not enough water in here to make it expand enough to create any leaks or pop or anything like that. 
It's also worth noting if you want to extend the earth wire or put a longer earth wire on, you can. And that also goes for the wire that we're going to connect onto the pipework in a minute. Another note about the earth wire as well, do not put it into the earth terminal of your heating system controls or anything like that. It has to be anchored into the wall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my earth clamp in below it. If I put the earth clamp in above, I might not have the headroom to actually draw the stop core out if we need to do anything to it. Right, for neatness, I'm just going to cut this here like that and strip off a lovely long bit of wire so you've got about an inch sticking out like this. Now we can wrap that around and around here. Now remember what we're doing here, we're electrically joining up the whole system, not just through copper pipe, but this is going to be on the water supply. So all the water in the heating system, in our radiators, in our tanks, everything will be protected. So strip back the red wire, making sure you've got a good inch there. Then if you want, just give the copper pipe a little bit of a clean and then use the Jubilee clip provided to clamp our wire to the copper pipe, making sure it connects nicely to it. And there we go, that's the install process done. So now all we need to do is get our syringe that's supplied with it. We're gonna fill this up with 10 milliliters of tap water and we're gonna squirt that into the hole at the top of the stop core and that will activate it. So now it's full of water, so the hole is just there. We're just going to inject that in now. What we're going to do to make sure that we are actually protecting everything now, we're just going to do a voltage test. So I've taken our wire off here. Now, this is now the anode. This is what's going to get corroded. Everything that connects to this wire here is the cathode and will be protected. Everything off this system here, everything that you can see, the valves, the pipe, the radiators, the underfloor heating manifold, the boiler, the coil, the water outside of the coils that's heated up by it, all that's going to be protected. And we'll also start to see less lime scale build up on outlets because of what I explained earlier. So we're gonna make sure now that we've got a voltage coming from this, feeding our ions and our electrons into here, and that small voltage coming into there just by using this multimeter. So I've just got it set. What I wanna see on here is anything over one volt. 1.2 volts would be fine. I'd, I'd like to see that, that'd be great. Let's just pop this up here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna test across our earth terminal there and then onto here. Let's see if we get that voltage. Wow, 1.5 volts, that's brilliant. Really, really good, that's great. Wicked, so we know it's all working. Pop the syringe into the stop core bag along with the instructions and leave it on top of the stop core so if anyone turns up, they know what they're dealing with. So then guys, all done. Look how easy that is to do. So that was one, two screws into a wall, an earth clamp, clamping it onto there, and then just a squeeze of water into the top following the instructions. Now we know that the whole system is effectively a cathode, it's protected. We're now already reducing the amount of corrosion. We've turned the whole system into a big ship and we're protecting it from the seawater of corrosion around it. I really, really like this product. I like how simple it is. I like how easy it is. I like the fact that there's science behind it that works. That's interesting for me. So here I am installing the smaller stop core at my home. Really, really easy to do. Exactly the same procedure. I thought you'd just like to see it as well. Now you can use this product in place of things like inhibitors and filters, but I'd prefer to see it as complementary to all of those things. They're all working together to keep your system nice and clean. And it's another weapon to the arsenal of keeping systems happy and working properly. So it's a really, really good product. You can find this beast on our Amazon store by clicking the link below. We've got both sizes on there. And you can also check out the website www.stopcore.co.uk for more local merchants. And I'll leave their link below as as well. But it's also worth noting that Stopcourt also made even larger ones than this for larger commercial properties. So you can have a look at that now, they're pictured here. And all the tools that I use on this video you can find in the Amazon store as well. So thanks ever so much for watching this week guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Bit of a different one for us isn't it? A little bit of science there. So if you liked it please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like, comment below what you think about this, how simple it is. If you've got any questions I'll do my best to answer them as well in the comments section too. So thanks very much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video, and remember, if there's one thing you've got to do, that's hold tight. See you soon. I was always having trouble.
it down. The sacrifice of the noble anode, the prevention of electrochemical, turning my whole system into a protected cathode, and I tell you now the results are just incredible. I've got no collusion anymore because I've been to this so easily. So guys, thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a great time making this one because it was a little bit of science. Please hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed yet. Please check out my other channel, Times of James, where you can watch me do loads of welding and flying. And also join the Owl Army where you could have been part of selecting this song for me to squawk all over. Anyway, see you in the next video, guys. Remember to hold tight.